Hey, what's up guys? This is uh, Elvin, aka Medieval Halls, and today I'll be bringing you a review of the Jada Toy Street Fighter Violent Ken. Now, I am really excited about this uh, figure. It's It's been a long time coming, and uh, in all honesty, it's, it's something which I wanted to customize much earlier on, but, um, you know, thankfully, uh, I don't have to do it. Yeah. So when you receive the package and you open it um you know it comes with a slip cover uh which i'm going to show you right now so yeah sorry it's um quite out of frame but yeah so basically it, it looks like this and for the back um it looks like this yeah with the rayu um stage yeah, so that's uh, Violent Ken, and when you open, um, take out the slip cover, it looks like this. And yeah, I think it's pretty well packaged. You know, it comes with the barrel and the broken barrel at the side, the Violent Ken himself, uh, the effects and the alternate hits. So let's uh, just uh, crack this thing open. All right, guys, so this is a uh, Violent Ken uh, out of the box with all his uh, accessories. So we're going to proceed to just have a look at, um, you know, his details. Yeah, so for most of you who collect Street Fighter, you would, um, Jada Street Fighter, you would know that, um, you know, what to expect of a Ken figure. All right, but what's different about this one is that um, you can see uh, there's a lot of uh, the purple highlights. Yeah, and um, if I'm not mistaken, for the backstory for Violent Ken is that he's under the mind control of M. Bison, and that explains why there's that purplish... Um, Kind of a skin color that that he has yeah so you can see the purple uh, all all around um even okay it's not very obvious here un, under the lights but uh there's definitely purple uh pain a uh, purple kind of a paint job and the uh, highlights you know in different parts of the costume the only issue I probably have about this is that, you know, the purple is pretty uh, haphazard, you know, so it's, you know, in, in some cases, it looks like, you know, he's just uh, dirty himself with, with some purple paint, you know, and in some areas, it looks like he has uh, some bruises and, uh, you know, blue-black uh, all over, so... It's just kind of strange, um, and I think it could be better applied. But you know, given the cost, um, I'm not entirely uh, surprised that you know it's it's like this. I, I can't really complain about it. All right, and yeah, let's just uh, take off, you know, his. Let's remove his his belt and his upper torso, and just sorry, I mean his uh, gi, and let's just have a look at. You know how he looks, you know, underneath uh, that, that gi, right? Yeah, so so the gi is completely removable, and I think the, the nice thing about it is that although it's kind of hidden, um, they, they still painted his, his back, you know, and yeah, I think the details is pretty nice. Um, I I like that they they bothered, you know, to uh to highlight his his back even though you know it's covered by by the gi largely. Yeah, so I I think that's something which I appreciate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, his pants not removable. Um, I'm not sure why anyone would do that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, over here, okay, let's let's have a look at 
his um, yeah face sculpt. So it's it's a pretty nice, pretty good paint job uh, in terms of the eyes. Yeah, I think it's quite crisp, and I think there's no slouch in terms of you know the paint job. So the only issue is that uh, I feel is that it looks a lot like blush. Yeah, so it kind of looks like he he had really bad makeup on and he hadn't had time to clean it off, you know, before he, he, he went for a fight. So, um, yeah, I mean, the expressions is, is really nice uh, and it's pretty similar to the one that we have uh, of the regular can. All right, but we'll get to that later. Um, so, okay, yeah, just let's just have a look at his alternate uh, head sculpts. Yeah, so the other one um, shows him in a kind of a, I don't know, grimacing look. Yeah, kind of pissed off, totally pissed off look. Yeah, I think the paint job here is pretty good too. You know, the eyes and, and all, it's, it's kind of like whited out eyes. Uh, if, if there's, you know, such a term. Um, okay, let, let me see if I can, you know, find uh, the one, the original player 110 paint job and you can kind of see the difference, right? Yeah. So if you look at the two, um, Violent Ken obviously has a lighter, a pale shade of yellow. Um, and his skin tone evidently is, is, a, is a bit different as well. Yeah, and I think the paint job seems to be better on the Violent Ken uh, compared to the Player One Ken. Yeah, but by and large, um, the face sculpts are the same. Yeah, it's largely the same. Um, and it's just that the eyes are whited up out for violent can yeah but the expression is pretty much the same yeah it's a scowling pissed off look yeah so that's the second sculpt so the third sculpt that we have is a completely new one uh something which we never had you know with the original can player one can and that's a shouting hit sculpt with a his uh, windswept uh, hair uh, all over the place. And I think I really like this sculpt because um, it shows him um, going kind of crazy, you know, and uh, basically unhinged. You know, he's, he's unhinged because it's under the mind control of Bison and yeah, I mean, this is this as violent as, as he can get. Um, I think the paint job here, unfortunately, is, is a bit sloppy because it went, the white went onto the lips. Uh, but eyes are pretty good, uh, pretty decent. Um, no complaints about that. Um, yeah, but it's largely, you know, kind of sloppy paint job. But I mean, I'm not going to complain because, you know, it's, it's a really good price. And this is um, cheaper than Evil Ryu, right? Yeah, so... Yeah, I think I like this sculpt quite a fair bit. Yeah, so details pretty good. All right, so um, yeah, so let's have a look at uh, his accessories. So he comes with a purple Hadugan fireball effect with you know the hands that's inside. So this is something which, if you have. If you have Ryu and you have Ken, you kind of know what to expect. You know, it's a purple um, Hadouken and yeah, I think we had a lot of this. Um, I think it's nice for them to have this uh, hands, the Hadouken hands, you know. So, you know, for those who, who, who do a lot of photography, this, this is a pretty nice effect. Yeah. 
So that's uh, the Hadouken and something new which I appreciate is actually the Fireball. Um, um what? <laughs> Not the Fireball. Uh, the Dragon Punch uh, Shoyugen effect. Yeah, and I think this is something which uh, I would have appreciated uh, in the original can. And as I understand, the Player 2 uh, can in white will come with a flame uh, dragon punch effect. So it's really a shame because I would really like this in, in uh, you know, orange in the player one uh, colors. Yeah, so I think it's a nice uh, vibrant purple and there's a kind of uh, gradient that goes down. So it's a bit darker at the ends um, and lighter at the top. Yeah, I'm not sure whether you can actually see it under, you know, that this light. But yeah, I appreciate that. It's it's a kind of um, nice shade about it. Alright. And as to whether it fits um, which hand, I... I okay, I honestly have not tested this. Um, but I'm just going to try it with the right hand. Yeah, so hopefully that fits in. All right. Okay. I think it's a pretty nice, uh, snug fit for the right hand. All right. So if you're gonna go into a Shoryuken, you know, effect, yeah, yeah. So it'll probably look like this. All right. So yeah, I think it's 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 pretty nice. It's pretty awesome. Show you again. All right. So that's the show you again effect. Um, and you can still kind of see, you know, parts of his arm. Um, in in this fire effects, not completely covered. Um, like the Fei Long, uh, effect. Uh, let's see if this fits on the other, uh, arm. Right, so let's just give this a try. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, it kind of fits in, yeah. But I think it fits better on, on the right, right arm. Okay, but of course, if you, if you want to use it for the, the other arm, it's, it's fine as well. Okay, so yeah, I think it fits nicely. Right, and if you want him to kind of like build up that power, you know, in preparation for a dragon punch, yeah, I mean, that's something that you can do as well. Right, you know, where he's kind of like getting ready to. You know, do that that dragon punch, and firing up his his hands. Yeah, so it's a really nice effect. I I really like this. Um, I wish we had gotten one for the original, you know, player one can, but at least we got it now with this violent can. You know, it's a deluxe, you know, figure. All right. So let's get you. Um, Nicely post up over here. Okay. Right. And yeah, of course, he comes with the alternate uh, hands as well, the Hadugan hands. Uh, that's really all we need you know, for, for hands. Um, well, it would be nice to have relaxed hands, but uh, Jada Toys usually only has uh, one set of you know alternate hands in most cases. Another thing about the sculpts also is that I wish we had a neutral uh, sculpt, you know, of, of Ken looking just, you know, with his, uh, with his mouth completely closed. You know, something like um, Ryu, you know, so if he's in a, you know, fighting in a neutral fighting stance, you know, that, that, 
they are usually they are in that you know neutral fighting stance and uh, I'm not sure why in the games the legs point the, the other direction um, yeah so usually you know they, they will be in this neutral stance and if they are in this neutral stance um, it would have been nice to have a neutral face but you know we don't have that option unfortunately and i think that's something which i i personally would have you know appreciated because i think it's it's uh i mean he doesn't have to look pissed off or you know kind of have this sick evil grin all the time you know he can just be not smiling you know yeah and what I mean is uh, let's see if I can find my review yeah so what I mean is is yeah I think to have this kind of a stoic uh, look you know without the need for um, you know gritting his teeth all the time would have been uh, would have been nice um, but unfortunately we didn't get any of that um, yeah so that's my chief gripe about the face sculpts but then that um i think it's all done you know well yeah all right so um yeah i mean the last accessory that i really want to talk about is is the barrels i think it's really cool that they give us the barrels you know and this is something which is always in Ken's uh, stage, right? There's always, in fact, if you look at that uh, photo in the background, you would realize that we have we have the barrels at the side, you know. And for the barrels, we all know that if you happen to be near the barrels and you get hit by, you know, a, a special move, then you know the barrels will break and shatter and just you know go off at the side so i think that's that's a really nice uh touch that they have this this broken barrel and they did kind of like a broken signboard with the evil Ryu as well so this is a kind of um something that they did for for ken which i think it's it's very relevant yeah because the signboards for Ryu's uh stage doesn't actually break you know if i'm not mistaken um but the barrels in this uh cans stage actually do break so it's it's really a nice uh touch you know for them to include this uh barrels and these barrels are very well painted too you see it's not just a flat color but there's some shading you know um of course if you wanted to you could shade it further and you know add more weathering to it but I think the fact that they actually did bother to shade this is is quite um, unexpected, and it's a nice touch, for them, you know. And these barrels are all very versatile. You know, you can always use them for, you know, other diorama props for your photography and such. So yeah, I think it's a really nice uh, thing that they did. You know, with this. Yeah, and I would say you know and. Um, yeah, the last piece of, you know, accessory that comes is that stand for, you know, the fireball effect. So if you look at this, there is a hole at the bottom of the fireball, which you can then plug in. Yeah, and that can be a floating, you know, fireball. Um, in case you want to display him that way and get him to do some hadugans. Yeah, so I think the only issue that... And the only other issue that I have, you know, with regards to characters like Ryu and Ken is that we really need a toe hinge, all right? Because when you do a Hadouken, um, you know, typically they are on their toes, you know, and yeah, it's, it's just strange, you know, for them to do a Hadouken, um, you know, without... I mean, nobody gets into a pose uh, like this, 
you know when they fight when you do a fireball they are, it's, it's always on their toes it's on their toes you know if you if you look at the the stunts um yeah anyway it's just really awkward for them to stand uh like this all right i'm not sure why i'm having ken uh topless but <laughs> it's, it's something which um i think you don't see very often yeah so yeah i i think i really like the um shading on on ken you know it's a darker tone uh, compared to the real ken later we'll 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 have a kind of a um figure to figure comparison but it's it's very nicely shaded um some parts of course um could be better shaded like this uh i mean i feel that this looks more like a bruise than, than an actual um i i don't know shadow lou uh psycho effect yeah anyway that's that's that um you know for for the character all right i'm not gonna go into articulation because i think you kind of know what to expect um you know it's, it's the usual uh stuff is double jointed um knees double jointed elbows yeah it's a, yeah and yeah butterfly joints yeah so i think it's i mean articulation wise you kind of know what to expect of of a can and a ryu um and they can get into most you know poses uh let's get your uh gi back um yeah because it's just strange for him to be topless half the time in this video um and some of you will say that it is totally unnecessary elvin for you to do this um and i have to agree <laughs> yeah so anyway let's get his gi back you know in in place yeah oh no i think i'm having a bit of a issue getting his gi back properly okay i'm just gonna do this off camera yeah so for some of you who you know um it's a fan of Street Fighter, I think Violent Ken is, is a nice iteration. And besides uh, Storm Collectibles, I don't think there are, there are any other companies that did a, a Violent Ken. Um, Soda Toys did an Evil Ryu, but they didn't have an Evil or Violent Ken. So I really like that. <laughs> you know, they they have this uh, in a six inch scale and the fact that they have someone to, you know, kind of, um, kind of compliment Evil Ryu, right? So, um, let's jump to the next section now. All right, guys. So now I'm going to do a kind of a comparison, uh, with his fellow, Street Fighter mates from Jada Toys and over here we have Evo Ryu yeah so if you look at Evo Ryu he also has a kind of like you know some dark uh, some shading as well and uh, yeah I, I basically custom painted um, the words on his back and supposed to mean destruction or death or something you know in, in japanese yeah um so i don't think ken has any characters on his back so i'm not gonna do anything um but yeah i mean with them side by side i think it looks pretty awesome yeah so this is that screaming hit scout that's exclusive to violent ken yeah and i think this they look Pretty awesome together yeah i think this is gonna be the new um display uh, option you know on my shelf wow it looks really good it's quite amazing all right so that's uh evil ryu 
And next, we're gonna have um, Ken. Yeah, so in this case, uh, I have Ken over here with some custom uh, soft goods. Uh, but I, I can't remember exactly who it is now. Um, yeah, but I think it's really nicely uh, done. So the difference uh, between the two cans, besides the obvious, um, you know, skin tone colors, is uh, the hair is different. It's a different shade of uh, yellow, um, and you know, uh, can also comes with only one alternate head sculpt. Yeah, um, and for cans, uh, he. The original Ken's Gi, you can see that, you know, it's uh, very clean at the side and it's quite clean as well, you know, over here in terms of his, um, it's, it's not tattered, that's, that's what I mean, alright. Uh, whereas this uh, Violent Ken is, they have tattered, uh, he has a tattered pants and a kind of ripped uh, gi as well, as opposed to a non-ribbed one. Yeah, so that's that's the difference. And uh, if I were to compare it to Evil Reuse Gi, um, I would say that it's actually the same Gi. Yeah, so I don't see any reason why they would, you know, do it differently. Um, there's no point wasting that money, you know, to make a gi that essentially looks the same. Right, so that's, that's Ken, right, with a custom, you know, soft goods. And, uh, of course, we have uh, Ryu as well. Um, and Ryu has, right, this is, well, I, I customized this besides the custom soft goods. Uh, this is a player tool, uh, colored um, Ryu. And uh, I, I painted his headbands as well. Yeah, so uh, regular Ryu with violent Ken. Yeah, so that's another combination that. Uh, you can try right and if you were to look at his fellow um solar mates um the one that put him under the mind control bison yeah so yeah i think this is a pretty good uh, combination as well if you want the bison to you know kind of stand behind him say do my will ken yeah, yeah so it's pretty awesome yeah, so he towers, um, yeah, Bison towers over, over Ken, yeah. Yeah, so, looks pretty good. And, um, well, besides that, we also have, uh, Dalsim, kind of his fellow wave mate, yeah, and quite honestly, this is a really good figure. Yeah, you know, he gets in so many um, Dalsim poses that, well, I, I think you can't really compete. Yeah. Alright, so that's, that's Dalsim. And next we have uh, Fei Long. Yeah, so that's Fei Long next to Violent Ken. And they can get violent with each other. And next, uh, and last but not least, you know, for the Jada comparisons, we have uh, Chun-Li with the SDCC exclusive uh, Pink Chun-Li's alternate head sculpt and, you know, his victory, her victory symbol. Yeah. So, yeah, I think this looks great. I love it. Yeah. So, Violent Ken, um, 
with his fellow mates. All right, so the next comparison that I'm gonna do is with uh, figures from other lines. So other lines, so if you want, can, you know, alongside Wolverine. Yeah, so this is a uh, effect Wolverine with a casting cave head. Yeah, brown Wolverine. So if you want your Marvel versus Capcom that's going on, you know, usually this is the pairing because Ken go goes with with Wolverine while Ryu goes with well, you know, Cyclops. Yeah, so that's how he looks next to um, Wolverine, right? And if you want him to fight, um, if you want to continue the Marvel vs. Capcom uh, kind of comparison or kind of fight that's going on, then we have Iron Man. Yeah, with Iron Man. And he's much taller than Ken. Uh, so Hasbro, Marvel Legends, um, Iron Man. And also, if you want to have a kind of a fight, yeah, you can have um, effects Spider Man fighting him as well. Yeah, and this is also a custom um, head sculpt. Spider-Man. All right. Yep. So that's Marvel versus Capcom, and of course, if you want him to fight the final boss in Marvel versus Capcom, then we have him next to Apocalypse. You know, it's so tall that it's out of frame, but basically, that's okay. This is not a good position. <laughs> All right, so yeah, the apocalypse essentially towers over, over Ken, yeah, and um, yeah, I think this will be an interesting fight. I'm pretty sure apocalypse is gonna come out victorious, but not before getting um, getting injured by a violent Ken. You know, and if you want more crossovers, you can have a kind of a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossover. And this is a Mesco TMNT Leo. Yeah, so I think this is a pretty good size. Right? <clears throat> and if you want someone else you know, with a different mind control that's um, affects Darth Vader so yeah he's more likely to be the one making Ken do all the weird stuff right and next we have you know if you want more crossovers. This is Mattel's Masters of the Universe um, He Man, a 40th anniversary He Man uh, with a sculptor shelf uh, head sculpt. Yeah, so, so yeah, I mean, He Man is, is a kind of the strongest man in the universe, so, um, well, he should rightly be bigger than, than Ken, right? So that's He-Man. Um, but if you want to kind of cross over, you know, to DC, you can consider, you know, Superman as well. So this is a uh, Mafex Superman with a Tony May um, head. So this is a uh, Ed McGuinness Superman. Uh, given the maxed out treatment and we have Batman here as well so this is a Mesco Batman with a custom Harker's custom cape uh, with a old boy uh, head sculpt 
so yeah i think that's a dc crossover if you want to, if you're into that kind of thing and i think this is pretty much it in terms of the comparison so yeah so all in all i i gotta say that you know with what uh Gia toys and where it's going uh in terms of the price i think it's it's really competitive in, in terms of of the price um i don't honestly can't think of any other companies that you know give us such a good selection of <clears throat> heads you know figures um without kind of breaking the bank so i really appreciate jada toys for coming up you know with with such great figures and i really hope that they continue you know the line and we saw recently in sdcc that you know that whole selection of um that whole lineup of street fighter is just incredible yeah so i really hope to you know be able to collect every single you know one of these uh, characters and violent ken is is no exception so yeah, I, I do hope that you found the review useful and the reason why I'm doing it is because I did I did one for Evo Ryu and yeah, I thought I, I had to do one for Ken. Alright, so um, hope you guys have a good week ahead and yeah, just uh, stay safe. Thanks.